The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance is a 1962 Western directed by John Ford and starring James Stewart, John Wayne, Vera Miles, and Lee Marvin as a senator returns to a Western town for the funeral of an old friend and tells the story of his origin. Paramount presents this film for the first time in 4K UHD, Dolby Vision, and HDR10. What is up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel. I am Ken and I'm here to talk about this latest release from Paramount, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance on 4K and I'm so excited to get into this one because I watched it earlier this year for my Western themed month on the channel and I just fell in love with this movie. So when I heard that Paramount was putting this out um, in 4K under the Paramount Presents line, this is the first ever 4K in the Paramount Presents line and this is number uh, spine number 31. But yeah, I was just so excited to revisit this movie in the 4K format. I'm just really looking forward to this one. So I'm excited to get into talking about this. But before we do that, I need to ask that if you are not yet a subscriber to the Mid-Level Media channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Do you like 4Ks and Blu-rays and physical media? Do you like all this stuff behind me? Do you like owning the movies that you love? The answer to that is yes. Then definitely hit that subscribe button for more great content. I do Blu-ray 4K reviews like this. I do news updates every single Monday in the form of the Physical Media Report, Blu-ray hunting videos, collection updates, unboxings, just tons of physical media content on this channel every single day. And I would definitely appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Also, be sure to like this video and comment down below what are your thoughts on The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, this classic John Wayne, Jimmy Stewart Western. Also, let me know if you're gonna purchase it Based on my recommendation today, I will be leaving the link for purchase in the description below. And turn on those bell notifications for all future videos. So let's jump right into it. And as with all these reviews, I do like to talk about the actual film itself before we get into talking about uh, the visual quality of the transfer and the audio and the special features and all that stuff. I am going to paint an overall picture uh, at the end as to whether or not this will be worth uh, picking up. So getting into the movie. So like I said, I was excited to jump back into this. It's very rare that I watch a movie uh, so recently, like four months ago, but then I just get so um, excited to revisit it. And I would say I was just as into watching this movie now as I was then, probably even more so. It has some really great performances by John Wayne and James Stewart. And I remember, because I hadn't heard about this movie before ever, and somebody recommended it to me for Western Month, um, and I was like, really? James Stewart and John Wayne were in a movie together? That had, that had to have been like a huge hit uh, back in the 60s. So the performances, the story, like I said, John Wayne and James Stewart in a movie together, that's like a juggernaut uh, cast because both of these, like I know they were both aging and they talk about that a little bit in the special features, how they were playing characters that, uh, you know, should have been played by like 30 year olds, but they were 50. So they were older in this movie. John Ford was in his sixties, uh, when he made this movie, this one of the last films, uh, that he ever directed. And some would call it his last great film, uh, that he ever directed, you know, the classic director, John Ford. I definitely want to dive more into his filmography because I did watch Stagecoach and I watched this one for Western Month, but I know he's got tons of other great Westerns that I want to dive into like The Searchers and My Darling Clementine. There's just a lot of movies that he directed that I want to uh, watch hopefully for Western month part two because I will be doing that but yeah just the performance of this movie are just top-notch like I just get so into to James Stewart and John Wayne this movie they're just they play so perfectly off each other they have such great chemistry um, you know Jimmy Stewart playing more of like the pacifist type that doesn't want to resort to violence uh, to solve his problems whereas John Wayne's like look you're gonna have to do some violent stuff to get your way to solve your problems here um, trying to show him how to shoot a gun and everything all that stuff is just really uh, really great in this movie. I just really appreciate those two performances, but also Vera Miles uh, is really great in this movie. It is kind of, it does kind of play like a love triangle between her and John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart, but she's absolutely fantastic, just super charming and charismatic. And I do like it's it's rare that you have a movie where you're both where you're rooting for both like the same. Like I feel like I I wanted John Wayne to get the girl, but at the same time I wanted James Stewart to get the girl. They're like John Wayne and James Stewart are just so incredibly likable as characters in very different ways, but I love them both in this movie. And I wanted them, I wanted there to be two Vera Miles so both of them could be happy uh, at the end of the day. But yeah, it is a it's a great story. Vera Miles is fantastic. Lee Marvin as Liberty Valance. 
uh, the outlaw bandit that they, you know, the problem that they have to deal with. He's fantastic. I just love the way he talks. Like, he's always like, hey, dude, and all this. Like, it's just a great performance by him. It's just super menacing. Uh, but also, you know, you can tell that he's a little bit on the uh, stupid side as well. He's not the smartest bad guy in the world, but he's really menacing. He doesn't give two Fs. So just walk straight into a bar and start tearing the place up uh, and causing trouble and shootouts in the, in the town and stuff. So he's fantastic. I just love that. Like, Hey dude, what do you think, dude? Uh, he's like got the dude thing on point in the movie and he's absolutely fantastic. So I love all the performances. Like I said, the story's really engaging. I love the themes um, and just like, you know, dealing with your problems through pacifism or violence is kind of the contrast between the two. Uh, you know, which is better? Like, are there moments where resorting to violence is the only way out of a situation? And just to kind of the, you know, and it, it plays into that theme and it kind of comes down to, look, like we have to take this guy out. He's a problem. He's causing a problem for everybody in this town. Like it, something has to be done and we can't just do nothing anymore. And it's Jimmy Stewart's like reluctance to that but then he kind of accepts the fact that that is the truth and that's what has to happen. So I love how it plays into that. It plays into both and kind of shows the uh, you know, the good qualities of both and how pacifism can definitely have its benefits, whereas violence can as well. And I like how it it plays into both of that. So I love the themes of this movie. They just play it perfectly. Um, it's a very well-directed movie. Like I said, John Ford was this probably his last great movie. There's nothing flashy about this movie, but it's very effective. I love the, all the shots in this movie. There's not a lot of camera movement or anything like that. It's all kind of set up for certain scenes and nothing really moves or rotates around. So like I said, not the flashiest direction, but it's just really effective for this type of movie. Um, very memorable scenes in this movie. Like I said, I love John Wayne and Jimmy Stewart. So they play off each other. I love the scene where he shoots the, the paint cans off the, off the fence and they fall on James Stewart and he gets white paint all over him and he goes up and he just lays John uh, John Wayne out. I, I think I posted on Instagram. I was like, uh, nobody could knock the Duke out like that and make it feel believable like, like Jimmy Stewart just did. Like it's, a, it's so badass. I love that moment. It's great. But just tons of moments like that in this movie I love. I love just the quiet inner interactions just the interaction with everybody in this movie like i said there's nothing too flashy about this film there's not a lot of big like grand moments or shootouts or, or stuff that you would see in typical westerns there is one big you know shootout sequence at the end or not big but just like you know big important moments uh but other than that like not a lot of gunplay and stuff in this movie it's just a lot of um, you know, interactions and conversations. And, you know, James Stewart's a lawyer. I love him. That's the performance in this movie. He's like, I'm a lawyer. Damn it. So just everything that he does. Is, I, I love, uh, you know, the way he interacts with everybody and just how mad he gets in certain moments uh, about things because he has such conviction uh, to everything that he says. So every time, like, James Stewart says something, it's like you perk up and pay attention and it just feels important. So I love him in this movie. Like, but the same thing with John Wayne. It's just, it's like, it's just this, this situation where just like two two super charismatic uh, juggernaut uh, actors just got together and they just played off each other perfectly. Also, I do want to talk about John Wayne and his performance. I have not seen a lot of John Wayne, uh, but he really goes to some uh, emotional and, and dark places in this movie. And I appreciated that. I just love the way that it ends with his character and his relationship with James Stewart. Like it doesn't end with everything being happily ever after and him and James Stewart are not like the best of friends or anything at the end of this movie. I just like the way it ends and it kind of leaves stuff open, even though you kind of know where it ends up because we do start in the present day with James Stewart as an old man and he's kind of telling his story of how he met Tom Donovan, uh, John Wayne's character. So I, did, I liked all that stuff. It was just, it was really nice and, and kind of felt a little bit refreshing for an ending of a movie. Um, so yeah, this movie to me, look, I, I think this is a perfect movie. I'm going to give it a five out of five. I absolutely love this movie. I can only see it growing on me even more as the years progress. So let's get into the transfer of this movie. So this is a native 4K transfer with Dolby Vision and HDR10. So Paramount went all out with this Paramount Presents release. Um, and the transfer here, I think it looks like it looks absolutely fantastic. It is a nice picture quality. The black and white, uh, you know, looks great with HDR. Like I talk about this all the time. Black and white is just like seriously underrated when it comes to 4K. Uh, just the way that the contrast and the increased black levels really add to really add an extra layer of depth to everything. Like it's without it, like I popped in the Blu-ray because this does come with a Blu-ray as well. And it is a new uh, remastered Blu-ray as well, a new 2K scan. It's not the same one that they released a couple of years ago. Uh, so it does come with a new scan on the Blu-ray, but you can just tell like when you look at the Blu-ray, like everything kind of has a 
like painted picture quality to it. But when you look at the 4K, just like with the extra black levels and the contrast, it's, it looks like it just has a lot more depth to it. Like there's actually something behind them, whereas you look at the Blu-ray and it looks like it could almost been drawn on or something. I mean, these are real sets, but it just kind of, it just adds that extra layer, layer of depth and really, um, you know, plays with that perception there. So I, I really appreciated this, uh, this transfer. The skin tones look great as well and the detail on the faces, the costumes, like you can just see all the fibers and stuff. They're all wearing like really nice suits and all that stuff just looks great. Um, with this 4K transfer. And when I watched this previously, a few months ago, I actually bought the Blu-ray, which was what I think was like seven bucks at the time on Amazon. I still think this Blu-ray is like $9. This is the 2017 Blu-ray, but they did do a 2015 Blu-ray. Uh, so not sure, I guess that went out of print or something and they did a new uh, remaster. But I do think, um, honestly, now that I think of it, I think the one that came out in 2015 was Warner Brothers, and I think that this one was Paramount. So maybe Paramount got the rights and they re-released this. Yeah, definitely a significant upgrade over the Blu-ray. Like you can just tell with the Blu-ray releases, like the, the colors and the tones are just a lot like lighter. Um, and just more whiter, just like a milkier tone to it, whereas the black levels just really uh, make this transfer pop. So this is definitely the best way to view this movie is through this new 4K transfer. Uh, the image quality isn't perfect though. There are some moments of blurring in the background I noticed in some parts. Um, you know, which weren't present in other parts of the movie. So it was few and far between, but it's definitely something to point out. It's a, again, it's not a perfect transfer, but overall at the end of the day, it was a really great and solid 4K transfer. And I would give it pretty high marks for that. As far as the audio, it is a Dolby True HD 5.1. So I'm just listening to this on a soundbar, but everything sounded great to me as far as the audio. So no issues there. Getting into the packaging. So I do really like this packaging. I do love the Paramount Presents packaging with the, you know, you flip it up and it has the poster and everything. I do like the metallic shine on the side and the man who shot Liberty Valance in black. Um, and it's the same thing on the other side. The only issue I have with this packaging, to be honest, um, is the clear case. I would have just, I, I know this is a Paramount Presents thing and they have clear cases on all of them, but I just would have liked if they did a black case for this one just because it is a 4K release. Um, but here I'll show on the back, just kind of giving you all the, the specs and the special features, which we're going to go into here again in a second. I'll go ahead and show the, I'll remove the digital code and I'll show you the two discs. So this is a two disc set with the Blu-ray and the 4K. Now the special features are only on the Blu-ray and they are not present um, on the 4K. One thing that I'll point out as well is like the menus for these. And I just saw this again, I didn't point it out in the Beverly Hills Cop 2 review, but the menus on these are just very lackluster and lazy. Like they just don't, there's nothing to them. It's just like this almost blurry image of the movie. And then down below you have like menu, scene selection, settings and all that stuff, extras. But there's just nothing to it. It just doesn't pop. It doesn't take a good picture. Um, like the universal ones, they need to take a cue from them because the universal menus are awesome. I love how they have the special features to the side and they're all like moving and stuff, like actually going. So um, yeah, Paramount's getting very lazy with their menu screens. And I've noticed that on recent releases, this isn't something that's always uh, been the case with them. So I did want to point that out as well. So uh, getting into the features, there's a great new special feature with Leonard Malton that is exclusive to the, this uh, Paramount Presents release. So he does a lot of special features for a lot of these releases. I love Leonard Malton. I just love his thoughts on movies and stuff. So it's a really insightful interview about the legacy of the man who shot Liberty Valance. And he really goes into a lot of interesting stuff. There's also a feature commentary by filmmaker Peter uh, Bagnovich, along with his archival recordings with John Ford and James Stewart. So there is an audio commentary here. Um, and it's funny because none of these other special features, which I'm assuming were present on like previous DVD and Blu-ray releases, but they're not on this 2017 Blu-ray that I have right here. This has no special features on it whatsoever. So these were all new special features for me. You also get the size of legends, the soul of myth, and you get all these little like feature, um, these little like almost like uh, behind the scenes featurettes with everybody talking about the making of this movie. It's probably like an hour worth of special features and that's a really cool special feature if you wanna dig into and learn more about this movie. Um, and you get an original theatrical trailer as well. So some really great special features 
uh, here on this disc. So overall, guys, look, as an actual release, I thought the transfer was awesome. The movie is spectacular. Again, five out of five. It's like a perfect movie for me. One of my favorites, definitely one of my favorite Western films. So an overall score, look, I'm going to give this a 4.5 out of five. I think it's a release and a movie that you should absolutely uh, have in your collection. It is available right now for $29.99 on Amazon, and I will leave that link down below for purchase. So I appreciate you guys checking out my review of The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. I hope you enjoyed it. Please, in the comment section below, let me know what are your thoughts on this movie, and let me know if you're going to pick it up based on my recommendation. Also, be sure to like this video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Turn on those bell notifications for all future videos, and follow me on all my social media accounts. Those links are in the description, and we'll see you next time.